Hello and welcome to online robotics lesson with Robocamp. Our topic today is robotic helicopter and the lesson is divided into four parts. This is part one, which means that in a moment we're going to learn a bit more about helicopters, how they came to be, where are they used right now. And once we're done with that, we will build, understand and program our robot. But that's up to come in the next part. Now, if you are a student and you would like to complete this lesson with me, for this stage, you don't need anything. For the others, you will need LEGO Widoo 2.0 set and LEGO Widoo programming software. If you are a teacher, hi there teacher, remember that you too can use all these lesson plans, all the materials I'm using and showing behind me with your students too. And there is much more lessons to see. For more information, go to our website. All the links and information is in the description below. And now everyone, let's begin our robotics lesson. The first mentions of a machine resembling a helicopter actually come from the 15th century, from the sketches made by Leonardo da Vinci. Now they looked a bit like this machine you see behind me. It's not exactly a helicopter, but it was supposed to go up in the air. Now, unfortunately, for several centuries, those sketches were little more than an inspiration to toy makers. However, everything changed at the beginning of the 20th century, thanks to the invention of engine. Now, as soon as people discovered that inventors all around the world wanted to make sketches of Leonardo da Vinci come true. However, it was in France in 1907 that two groups of independently working people, one led by the Breguet brothers, the other by Paul Cornu, that managed to create and successfully test machines that lifted its pilots up in the air. The early versions of helicopters were far from perfect. They were difficult to pilot, they couldn't fly very high or far. That's when Igor Sikorsky, uh, a Russian-American inventor with both Polish and Ukrainian roots, entered the scene. You see, Sikorsky is considered the father of all modern helicopters. How did that happen? You see, before his time, helicopters were really looking alike like planes, except their wings were swapped for rotors. Now, Sikorsky came up with this design you can see behind me. It was the first model produced also in the US with one large rotor on top and the other smaller one on its tail. It was very innovative and it allowed the pilot to be able to very, or rather much more easily control this aircraft. It was infinitely better than the competition. Now this model was called VS300 and you can see it right behind me. The improved model from this prototype became the first mass-produced helicopter. Nowadays, helicopters are very popular and no wonder, those are the most mobile aircrafts that people use. First of all, thanks to the complex construction of its main rotor, helicopter can move in all three planes and thanks to the rotor on its tail, it can actually rotate around its own axis. Now, when it's not flying, it can actually also stay up in the air without moving at all. That's very useful, since no other aircraft can do it. 
finally, helicopters can land and take off by using an area really no bigger than the diameter of its main rotor. Although everyone agrees that Sikorsky's design for the helicopter is pretty great, it hasn't stopped people from experimenting with other designs. For example, you can see sometimes helicopters with two main rotors that actually rotate in opposite directions. Okay, now thanks to this, they don't need any tail rotor and they produce a great lifting force, which is very helpful when it comes to transport. Not surprisingly, helicopters were quickly adapted into the military for reconnaissance and evacuation missions. However, they are also very useful to everyone else. You see, firefighters, police, hospitals, mountain rescue and many other public health services welcome helicopters with open arms. Thanks to these aircrafts, they can quickly transport and help all sorts of people. People injured in car crashes, uh, victims of natural disasters, even shipwreck survivors. Besides transporting people, helicopters carry out many other unusual tasks, all thanks to their versatility. For example, people use helicopters to remove snow from power lines so that they don't collapse. Helicopters also deliver all sorts of goods to very extraordinary, hard to reach places or put out fires by emptying a tank of water directly over the fire. Helicopters are even used in agriculture for spraying crops. I think that by now we can all agree that helicopters are pretty great. However, like all things, helicopters have certain limitations. First of all, well, because of their size and weight, helicopters cannot carry heavy fuel tanks, which means they cannot fly on long distances. Second, the construction of rotors and of the helicopter itself is very complicated. This makes repairs much harder to get. Third, well, to start those rotors, the helicopters need an incredible amount of power. All of these reasons make helicopter maintenance very, very expensive. Before we end, uh, I have a brain teaser for you. Imagine you're on board of an aircraft flying in the air and suddenly the engine shuts down. Now, where would you rather be? On board of the plane or on board of a helicopter? Now, surprisingly, if you're on board of a helicopter, the engine failure is not the worst case scenario. You see, because the helicopter rotors are coordinated, the machine will not drop down like a rock, although gravitation pulls the helicopter down. The upward movement of the air makes the blades of the helicopter rotate. Consequently, the helicopter falls down, but slowly. Okay, so as you can see, even if the power shuts down, Helicopter can still, despite that, perform an emergency landing. Now, engine failure is uh, not a joke in either of these situations, but I know that I would much rather be on board of a helicopter if that happened, not a plane. Thank you everyone for learning fun facts about helicopters with me. Now, this introduction had some elements of history, general knowledge, and a dash of physics. Now the first part of our lesson is over. It's time to open the next video and 
start building a robotic helicopter, my original design of Robocamp, with me. I'll see you in the next video.